don't don't give your iconic little Ben okay. half smile, top teeth only. Okay. Don't tell the audience I do the beta male smile at you. <laughs> All right. Um. Whatever. Just cut the. Just cut this whole thing. The world. What a terrifying place. Seek horrors, and you will find they exist behind every corner. If endless fears of evil beasts and the wickedness of reality torments your restless spirit, confront it. Take a seat and settle in. You've made it just in time for the Goblin Hour. Goblin Hour. We're back. It's me, Goblin Hour Ben, and I'm back again. And I have with me a returning guest, Brendan. Whoa, whoa. It's me, guys. It's Brendan. How's it, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> Woo, yeah. They love you. They're happy to see you. They love it. Welcome back, dude. How are you doing? I'm doing so good. Sorry, I was swallowing when you said that. It's a good day to be me. It's a good day to be alive. I'm feeling good. I'm here on Goblin Hour. I'm just, I, I, I'm just feeling good. No, that, no other way to say it. That's fucking epic, dude. Audience, yeah. Wow, true. All right, Brendan. The people know you. They know you're a returning guest. If you don't, this is Brendan. He's crazy. Met him at work. Um. We're skipping all the bullshit. Goblin Hour is becoming more fast-paced. Because I know you guys don't give a fuck about my life and what I'm up to. You want to hear about creatures of evil. Am I right, audience? Dude, they love it. They love short-form content. No, this isn't short-form. It's just less filler. They love less filler. Do not show these guys One Piece. Show them One Piece. They'll change their minds. <laughs> Wait, you're right. But um, So, Brendan, what do you think this monster ghoul creature this scary beast I'm going to show you is today. I think it might be a a big octopus, like Oklahoma octopus. Ooh, that's crazy. Hold on, I got a text. I'm going to read this. Oh, my God. Unprofessional? I'm scheduling other goblin hours, all right? Oh, sorry. All right, come on. But um, you think it's the Oklahoma octopus? That's all all I got in the tank. All right. I'll prepare to be fucking upset when it's not that... (laughs) And, uh, you may have heard of this, you may have not. I don't know, but I know you'll like it as soon as you hear me say it. I'm, I'm going to have a big smile. Okay. From Wikipedia. The free encyclopedia. In American folklore, the Snallygaster <laughs> is a bird reptile chimera originating in the superstitions of early German immigrants, later combined with sensationalistic newspaper reports of the monster. This is going to be a good episode. The Snallygaster. <laughs> the Snallygaster. Have you ever heard of this beast in your whole entire life? I, if it, if it wasn't for Goblin Hour, I don't think I ever would have. And now you'll be able to tell your grandkids about it. <laughs> okay. Early sightings associate the Snallygaster with Frederick County, Maryland, especially the areas of South Mountain and the Middletown Valley. Later reports would expand on sightings encompassing an area to include Central Maryland and the Washington, D.C. metro area. Okay, okay. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy knows where he is. This guy does know where he is. He's in the same location as the hit game Fallout 3. Whoa! Let's talk about Fallout. talking about fallout this is not fallout 4 let's talk about it <laughs> another show i'm working in the works whoa hold on it'll probably just be called fallout let's talk about it but it is in the works audience so stay tuned no i will way. update you as things move forward All this right. one better get a twitter account too oh yeah you know it's gonna in addition to the no goblin our twitter account um, check this out. History. 18th century. The area of Frederick County, Maryland was settled by German immigrants beginning in the 1730s. Early accounts describe the community being terrorized by a monster called a Schnellergeist, meaning quick ghost in German. The earliest incarnations of the creature mixed the half-bird features of a siren with the nightmarish features of demons and ghouls. The Snallygaster is described as half-reptile, half-bird, having a metallic beak lined with razor-sharp teeth, occasionally alongside octopus-like tentacles. The Snallygaster was rumored to swoop silently from the sky to pick up and carry off its victims. 
the earliest stories claim that this monster sucked the blood of its victims. Seven pointed stars, which reputedly kept the Snallygaster at bay, can still be seen painted on local barns. Oh my, dude, this is terrifying. Yeah. Oh my I god. I got some pictures later that you're gonna want to see and describe. I am not. I am not ready. I the don't want to see a picture of that. The scary gaster, more <laughs> like it. Ooh. <laughs> Good name. Good name. All right, 19th century. It has been suggested the legend was resurrected in the 19th century to frighten freed enslaved people. Okay. Okay. Good uh, good history right there. <laughs> 20th century. That was the only 19th century <laughs> bullet point. Thank God. I don't want any more than that. 20th century. Newspaper accounts throughout February and March 1909 described encounters between local residents and a beast with enormous wings, a long-pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. It was described as making screeches, like a locomotive whistle. All right. It was described as making screeches like a, motive, like a locomotive whistle. A great deal of publicity surrounded this string of appearances, with the S- Smithsonian Institution offering a reward for the hide. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt reportedly considered postponing an African safari to personally hunt the beast. Whoa. It was later revealed that these reports were part of a hoax perpetrated by Middletown Valley Register editor George C. Roderick and reporter Ralph S. Wolf in an attempt to increase readership. The descriptions they invented borrowed themes from existing German folklore, including dragon-like creatures who snatched children and livestock, and also appeared to invoke descriptions of the Jersey Devil, which had been spotted mere weeks earlier. Jersey Devil? Where can I get more information on that? Goblin Hour, episode two. Check it out. Season one, episode two, even. One of the first episodes shot. Incredible. You and uh, real Goblin heads will know that that is arguably Goblin Hour episode three because we lost the footage for Goblin Hour episode two, which unf- you know was kind of okay because it was a bad episode. It was about UFOs, but um, yeah, interesting fact for you. Check out Jersey Devil episode season one episode two officially. But yeah, this is an interesting one so far because it's mentioning sirens, which we've talked about. It's mentioned the fucking uh, Jersey Devil, which we've talked about. It's just a lot of sort of bleed from other things. We're building the Goblin cin- Go- Goblin Hour cinematic universe. This is Avengers. This is Avengers. I love them. Oh, I love Avengers. Okay. No, you don't have a favorite Avenger. We were talking about that. Yeah, no, I don't really like them all. I hate all of them. No, Guardian, Gu- Guardians of the Galaxy are better. We like Guardians of the Galaxy more. Yeah, I like the raccoon. True. Oh, my God. Favorite Avenger for me? Gotta be Groot. But, um... <laughs> it was a trick of fate in low county mood that Senator McCarthy should first have bound into... P- what the fuck is this? All right. Uh, this is, I guess, 21st century appearances. Okay. The Snallygaster appears as a boss fight in Blair Witch Volume 2 of The Legend of Coffin Rock, which takes place in 1886. 2008, author Patrick Boynton published a history of the Snallygaster entitled Snallygaster, The Lost Legend of Frederick County. In 2011, an annual beer festival called Snallygaster started in Washington, D.C., 2017 edition of J.K. Rowling's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them incorporated the Snallygaster, Snallygaster into her Harry Potter universe. It is described as a part bird, part reptile relative of the Okami with a serrated steel fangs, a bulletproof hide, and a natural sense of curiosity. A creature called a Snallygaster, going back to something I like, appears in the 2018 Bethesda game Fallout 76. It bears little resemblance to the creature of legend and is described in the game as a failed genetic experiment. The Snallygaster is a blended whiskey... No, fuck that. A whiskey product? Who cares? <laughs> South Mountain Creamery, a dairy farm, produces an ice cream flavor named Snallygaster. It consists of peanut butter, ice cream with caramel swirl, peanut butter cups, and pretzels. Probably fine. Wow, this thing has a lot more of like a of a modern presence than I thought. Yeah, it's got a funny name. It's got a funny design, too. Like, when I show you, you're going to be like, whoa, that thing looks crazy. I'm going to be jumping out of my chair. It, it looks cool. I like this one a lot so far. Uh, there was another episode I did today. I guess to peel back the curtain a bit, I'm not sure when these episodes are coming out. This is the <laughs> Snallygaster episode. Earlier today, I just filmed the Owl Man episode. Ooh. Sorry, Brendan. Spoilers. Spoilers. But that guy no. fucking sucks ass. We hated him. Really? He has no powers. He didn't do anything cool. He just got seen a few times. Uh, is it, I mean, I, I, I guess I could listen to Goblin Hour episode Owl Man, but you just kind of fly around and that's it. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, it kind of sucked. But you'll love the episode, surely, but man. It's okay. That, that leaves room for good banter. This, yeah. guy, this guy sucks. Owl Man? I hate this guy. Yeah. All right, check this out. Let's hear it. Snallygaster, winged creature of the Northeast. For centuries, a large winged beast. Now, this, is, this comes from, uh, by the way, Snallygaster, winged creature of the Northeast by Legends of America. 
Okay, I thought the name of the website was like snallygaster.com or something. <laughs> no, that would be too biased. <laughs> um, the first one we looked at was Wikipedia, which is generally how we start. But uh, next, for centuries, a large winged beast known as a snallygaster is said to have terrified the people of Frederick County, Maryland. The dragon-like beast is described as a half-reptile, half-bird living deep in South Mountain's caves. The mysterious creature is said to swoop down silently from the sky, stealing farm animals and children from the unsuspecting farm folk. Some say it's real. The area was settled by German immigrants beginning in the 1730s, who called the creature a Schnellergeist, meaning quick spirit. So Wikipedia said quick ghost. This one says quick spirit. It's speed and it's some sort of thing. You know, something, some sort of th- thing. Yeah, so I mean, all, all I'm hearing now is he's kind of... He just kind of swoops in and take the, takes things and and maybe even people. Yeah, I he doesn't like he he has like the big teeth. He has the big claws. He has what like a third eye. You said somewhere maybe I don't like an know, eye I don't in the saying no that. eye in the middle of his forehead. Something something along those lines. Okay, I don't remember that. I don't know. I listener, re- rewind the episode. Look for the word. <laughs> listen for the word eye. Third eye. But no, he like he he does. He seems strong. He seems powerful. No, I do think he he's more interesting than some of these guys because it seems like it's got. I don't know if it has powers, but it's at least like a large mutant, which is interesting. Yeah, I, just, I want. I just want to hear tales of him of him scrapping, of him fighting. I don't want to. I don't want any more of this. We'll see. Because yeah, he picked my he picked up my pig. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the earliest folklore mixes the half bird features with the nightmarish features of demons and ghouls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know that. There might be more down here. Oh, yeah. Other description described as half reptile, half bird with metallic beak liner. Sometimes described as out of his tentacles. The earliest stories claim that the monster sucked the blood of its victims. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? You wanted to hear about it scrapping. <laughs> Let's hear it, dude. The Snallygaster has one widely known enemy called Dwayo. What? The Double Dwy- feature? Yeah. The Dwayo is reported to be a mammalian biped with features similar to a wolf, but the stance and stature of a human. Whoa. It's like a fucked up werewolf. No, oh my god, it cuts off. No, come on. It says the Dwyo and Stalgaster, and then the next page is something else. Oh. All right, well, I'm taking note of that. I'm going to fucking make an episode on the Dwyo now. That is it. Dude, he's got a more, <laughs> he's got an enemy. He has a rival. I know, that's awesome. That's insane. It's like Kyogre and Grudon. It's like Kyo- Grudon? I think yeah. you mean Groudon. Kyogre, uh, Kyogre and Grudon, yeah. Uh, Maybe get your freaking names right. Okay. Oh, buddy. yeah? Put in, hey, future me, put in the Pokemon rap from it, the advanced <laughs> generation where he says, Grudon, Kyogre. He says that. So. Grudon, I was going to say, we both took a drink at the same time. We're both thirsty. Also, the, you that, your thing is a thermos, by the way. It is a thermos. I'm keeping it open. Why do you not have a water bottle that's like for drinking water and not for keeping your soup warm? Uh, my Nana got me this like six Christmases ago. I don't have it for sentimental value. I just have it because... It's a thing that holds water, and I don't care enough to spend, like, 20 bucks to get a thing with a straw. All right. <coughs> Whoa! <laughs> For years, the Snallygaster lived only on the pages of folklore until 1909, when stories of the beast began to appear in newspapers. <coughs> nice. Excuse me. Encounters between local residents and the winged creature in February and March 1909. <gasps> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Described it as having enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. Okay. Oh, that, yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. Audience, don't rewind. <laughs> Further, it was said to make screeches like a locomotive whistle. We know that. Um, a February 1909 article claimed that a man had been seized by the winged creature, which proceeded to sink its teeth into his drug jugular Whoa. and drain the body of blood before dropping it along a hillside. Well, he drained his body of something else along with it. Like what, Brendan? Uh, uh... Well, uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, what else? What else you got written on that there on that uh, page, huh? Well, what else you got, huh? That is crazy, though. See, a man had been seized by the winged creature, which proceeded to sink its teeth into his jugular and drain the body of blood before dropping it along a hillside. I'm on team. It, I think it does have tentacles coming out of its mouth. Oh no, absolutely. Because I feel like. They're probably not literally tentacles, but they probably look close to yeah, that. Yeah, like a ten. A they might be for like, like a draining. Appendage. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, the story was carried prominently in Middletown, Maryland's Valley Register, and soon spread far and wide. So much so that the Smithsonian Institution offered a reward for the Hyde, U.S. President Theodore for the Hyde. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt reportedly considered postponing an international trip to hunt the beast personally, which would have been badass. No, that's insane. That's like Teddy a good Roosevelt movie idea. Of, of Night of the Museum fame, 
postponed, almost postponed like a whole ass function just because he wanted to hunt this guy. Like imagine that an alternate history movie about Theodore Roosevelt <laughs> alone out in the woods. Like it's like flying over. <laughs> And he's like, oh, I'll kill you, foul beast. It like picks him up. He's like, oh, he's thrashing around. Dude, all I'm saying is, if my if my president does that, he's got my support till until my dying breath. Dude. Yeah. Like, that is badass. I want to see Joe Biden doing Sleepy that. Sleepy Joe could never. Sleepy no, Sleepy Joe could do asleep. it. <laughs> no, he he would not fall asleep. Don't You're say that. that. Neither of our presidents right now are, st- are brave enough or strong enough to fight the Snallygaster. That's why I'm going to run for president. <laughs> I'm going to fight a Snallygaster. That's why Brendan was on. He wanted to announce he's running, I'm for, running president. for president. I'm running for president. They love you. Oh my, I'm so, I, can I count on your votes in the upcoming election? Oh, I guess uh, not. I guess oh. they, they were just excited. They were in MAGA hats out in the audience. They're all talk. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm going to put my phone away so I stop looking at it. You know, I'll do the same thing. Cute. Okay. Um, the story is prominent. Hunt the beast personally. In the early issues, the flying beast seemed to be everywhere at once. In New Jersey, it was reported that its footprints were first discovered in the snow. In West Virginia, it was said that the flying beast almost caught a woman near Scrabble. It was found roosting in a farmer's barn and laid an egg the size of a barrel near Sharpsburg. Holy shit. A man in Castown, Ohio, wrote a letter to the Valley Register telling of a strange creature that flew over his head, flew over his area, making terrible screeching noises. He described it as having two enormous wings, a large horny head, and a tail 20 feet long. A large what head? <laughs> um, wait, wait, pause. This creature's fruity. Uh, this creature's freaking fruity? We got what the, is this guy? We got the zesty creature. We got the freaky ass uh, creature. What is this guy? <laughs> freaky ass uh, creature. No, if this creature is freaky, it'd be called the the uh, freaky gaster. Uh, let's say that again. You say it. The fr- the freaky. No, ga- say oh. um. Do if this creature <laughs> say the full thing. If this cre- what, what did I say? What, if, what if am this, I saying? Give if, me my line. If this <laughs> if this creature was freaky, it'd be called the freaky gaster. Okay, here I go. If this creature was freaky, it'd be called the freaky gaster. <laughs> <laughs> Good, nice one, Brendan. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Ben. Thanks, audience. <sighs> it's tough being that cool. <laughs> All right. It was first sighted in Maryland by a man who operated a brick-burning kiln near Cumberland. Spied near the kiln sleeping, it emitted a blood-curdling scream when it awoke and angrily flew away. It was also sighted near Hagerstown, south of Middletown, at Lover's Leap, and seen flying over the mountains between Gapland and Burkittsville, where it was reported to have laid another very large egg. The last sighting in Frederick County occurred in March 1909, where three men fought the creature outside a railroad station for nearly an hour and a half before chasing it into the woods of Carroll County. Afterward, there were no more sightings of the mysterious creature for the next 23 years, at which time it once again appeared in Frederick County, Maryland. The first reports said the bird was seen just below South Mountain in Washington County. At the time, it was surmised that as the life expectancy of a snallygaster was estimated to be at about 20 years, the new sightings were from the offspring of the 1909 creature. At this time, the Middletown Valley Register requested that local residents who spied the creature should provide as accurate and detailed a description as possible for scientific purposes. Okay, I'm really, I'm really glad they commented on, like... What happened? Like not what happened to the eggs, but just any anything about the eggs. I know they after don't the time skip because I, I really latched <clears throat> onto that because the fact that there are eggs more than one even implies that not only did the snallygaster of course lay eggs, there's at least there is at least two snallygasters for reproduction. Yeah, unless and it has some like new reproductive method, unless, like weird asexual reproduction, but it it still uses eggs for some reason. Dude, if this thing is asexual, it sounds like it's not only using eggs, it's probably using pronouns, too. Ugh. <laughs> Audience like that one. They're, they're tipping their MAGA hats at us. They are. But I'm really glad they did, because, again, I did... I agree. I latched onto that. I thought, I this thing's laying eggs? I think a lot of the time, uh, they, a lot of cryptids sort of shy away from the idea of reproduction. They're just like, oh, it's a monster or something. Who ca- Who gives a shit? Yeah. Don't think too hard about it. But the fact that this one has, like, that information, I find fascinating and i'm glad it's included here no i do really like that it's it's more of like an animal you know like this you know it lays it's eggs treated as an actual piece of cryptozoology which i think adds a lot of credibility to this creature's uh 
legitimacy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. I also kind of appreciate that it doesn't have powers. It's just simply a dangerous creature born from nightmares. Yeah, no, I mean, really, if you really boil it down, it's just, it's just a big bird. It can fly. It has incredible strength. It sucks blood using its tentacles. It's scary. It's powerful. But, you know. But, you know, it it's, just wants to it's no, it's no bullshit it's about kiss. it shooting fire or anything. Yeah, no, it's it definitely not, looks it, like it this ain't, this ain't no Thunderbird. Let's here, just say that. You know what? Before we get into this, um, we have a picture for you here. Whoa. Go ahead and describe that to the damn-ass audience. Whoa. Maybe let's not make fun of the audience, okay? I'm not making fun of them. I'm describing them. All right. This creature, it's very interesting. It's got, like... I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's kind of like an... It's got kind of like an ostrich-esque body with with a big, well, presumably two, or maybe three, I don't know. With a, what I can see, a big, a big, a big old eye. It does have tentacles coming out of its mouth. They look scaly. And it's got, I don't know, it's got like these angel wings. Like it looks like, it looks like wings you would see on, like on a human in a, in, in, a, in a book, in a book or a drawing or a movie or anything. It doesn't. It doesn't have bird wings. That's really weird. Yeah, this thing looks crazy. Like, it frankly looks like it shouldn't be able to fly and move about based on this artist's rendition. Oh, wait. Oh, I, oh, hold on. It does have just one big eye because I'm the, with the, the angle it's at. I, I was confused on the angle. Mm-hmm. But now I see very clearly it does just have one big bulging eye. What else is that? Is that something? I think that's just this big... It's big claws on its toes. Yeah, no, audience, this thing is crazy. Like, no, this is insane. Google Snallygaster, see what comes a up. A lot of the time, I'm like, oh yeah, it's fine. If this is audio only. This is a good point where I wish we had, you know, a video I could put up. Like, uh... <laughs> there's the picture of the Snallygaster on screen <laughs> with the with that with the little yeah. sound effect. Yes, that would be awesome. Oh, are, are we doing this now? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. We do the ASMR gag too much. All right, um, next what we go. Are. The Snally Gaster. <laughs> ah! This one is from fearsomecritters.org. Sorry, I was drinking. Good website. Yeah. Fearsomecritters.org. This ain't no cryptid wiki. So let's see how long this goes on for it. Because this one is long. This is like a nine Yeah, that's that's a relatively thick have stapled papers you have. Yeah, this one's a lot. So, okay. Middletown Valley. Man kills strange bird. Residents of Pleasant Walk in the northern section of Middletown Valley have been much excited during the past week over the identity of a large strange bird which was shot and killed by Edward Lewis. Some of the persons who saw the bird expressed the belief that it is the offspring of the dread Snallygaster, which appeared in this section in November 1932. Despite the fact that scientists claim it requires from 20 to 25 years for a Snallygaster egg to hatch, those who believe that the young monster is a small Snallygaster claim that the unusual heat of the present summer caused one of the eggs to hatch prematurely. According to Mr. Lewis, he had been missing chickens from his flock for some time and kept a watch for the bird, which was four and a half feet tall, measured six feet from tip to tip of wing. Its bill was four inches in length. The bird had speckled feathers. This is scary. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know if this is, like, fiction or nonfiction or what the hell this is, but... I don't, it, it is written a bit like a story. Yeah. So we'll see. Mr. Lewis also stated that even after the bird had been shot and badly wounded, it made an attempt to attack one of his children, and it was necessary to fire a second shot in order to save the child from the clutches of the monster. This is... Okay. So is this is this the mama Snallygaster or the baby Snallygaster? I'm I think confused. it's theorized that this is a baby. Okay. It did say four and a half feet tall. I think yeah. mama Snallygaster would be a bit bigger. And apparently this is cited as being from the Worcester Democrat, July 27th, 1934, which sounds like a journal. Yeah. It sounds like an actual article, so I don't know. Uh, Okay, here. So that was how we opened, which is um, an excerpt. Now we get into the meat of the article on Fearsome Critters. There are just some stories too good to be true and others that are just too good. Early America was a strange place. Few migrants knew exactly what to expect in such a curious, unfamiliar land. And some expectations were higher than others. <coughs> nice. <coughs> oh, nice. For good authority, for good authority has it that in the Appalachian foothills near South Mountain, there exists a belief that the vicinity is plagued by a blood curdling flying creature of vast proportions, the Snallygaster. 
<laughs> Sorry, I was scared. An avian reptile miscreation. The Snallygaster is said to prey on poultry and carry off children after nightfall. The brute is suggestive of European dragons, the major divergence being the prior is wholly hideous. The grotesque gargantua boasts a beak of iron fitted with teeth of steel, claws like scythes, an eye midway in its forehead, a pair of feathered wings, and a dozen wriggling tentacles to boot. Okay, so we're, we're the pretty traditional description. We're back to the tentacles, we're back to the yeah. eye. I'm not sure about reading this one for too long because it's like actually written. Yeah, it, it's not just a fact sheet. Yeah, it does seem more like, like not like not a story per se, but this is no. There's actual flavor to the writing. It's not just yeah. Th- it's not. It, it's not thing. just dry information. God, I I can't get over just the concept of this guy. Like, yeah, I know it's crazy. The Snallygaster as an idea, like uh, uh, you know, it, yeah. assuming it we'll exists, be, we'll which, be done which with of this course one. it does. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is insane. Because, yeah, it's – I really – I'm glad that the thumbnail is there because, audience, I recommend as we talk about this, you occasionally refer to it or at least pull up a picture of your own on your phone. But it is a very interesting creature. It might be the most visually striking creature we've talked about on Goblin Hour. Oh, no, absolutely. Because like – this, this guy's just insane. Like, it's an amalgam of a million things. I think the only thing that could arguably come close might be the death worm just because – it's so like it's a it's a big worm, but that's you know, worms are just happen to look the alien. This is actually like yeah. a combination of it. Like this is not something that exists in our world. Yeah. Like and in terms of or no, re- uh, excuse me, this is not something that casually exists in our world. Yeah, and I, like, I this think is an the, other world. The thing about creature. a worm, the thing about a worm is you know it's it's just kind of like a big whoopsie daisies. I I tried doing a motion. I almost knocked a what was that paper towels and some. Not sponsored, by the way. I almost knocked some of that over. I'm going to censor the brand name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Not sponsored, by the way. But yeah, um, like with a worm, it's just kind of like a big pink thing. Yeah. You know, and the... the even the, if it has crazy teeth. Yeah. Even with crazy teeth, you know, that's not expected, but it's, it's, you know, we can understand that. Yeah. But this guy... It's got one, the tenac- eye. one eye, tentacles, weird angel wings. Can fly. Big claws, can fly. Attacks you, blood blood lets you, and eats you. Eats your blood. E- eats, your, eats your blood, eats your kids, <laughs> eats, your, eats your chickens. Eats your grandma. Eats your grandma, eats your dinner. <laughs> What's this thing not eaten? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, that, that's why you're the host of Goblin Hour. Thank you, dude. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, but no, I agree. This thing is wild. Uh, next up, because I decided we're going to put a pin in this now, I guess. And if you guys are interested in reading it, um, the reason I'm not reading it, it's a little too, like, it's actually written. Someone put their heart and soul into it, <laughs> and I don't feel it's appropriate to just sit and be like, oh, that's pretty good, and not really provide commentary on it. So if you're interested in reading the rest of this. FearsomeCritters.org, the Snallygaster article. So check it out. We might come back to it later, but as of right now, uh, I'm moving on from it. Sweet. All right. Let's move on. You texting? You're Sorry. Texting? I, I yeah. got a text. And I looked at it, and it kind of really it kind of really threw me off, but I'm, I'm locked in. Don't Are you worry. Good? Do you need to respond to it or something? We can take a break. No, it's not. Ooh, let's see. Uh, okay, no, it's good. It's cool. Okay. I, don't, I don't need to respond. I can respond to it at the end. You also... Touch your Apple Watch like it's the fucking Omnitrix and not just your fucking Apple Watch. Like you go like, whoosh, like you act like it's fucking Hero Time every time you respond to a text. Listen, man, what if it is Hero Time? It's not, dude. I if I did have the Omnitrix, I think I would not. I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't let you know. Why? Because <laughs> it'd be funny. I would see it on your wrist. Also. It'd be funny. It'd be funny to keep a secret for. No, I. I would tinker with it to make it look like it, an, an Apple Watch. You can't do that. That's not how the Omnitrix works. That's how I make it work. Okay. I don't know. No, I don't know nothing about Ben Ten. I guess we're just lying now. Okay. I don't know nothing about Ben Ten. I don't know how it works, but I All could right. make it work. Whatever. Yeah. Keep reading your fucking thing. For a little bit of a sneak peek, this is what some of Fallout. Let's talk about it. Might be like because we're entering the Fallout zone. Whoa. Why do you why do you think they use bottle caps as a currency in Fallout? I actually have a cool game theory about this. It's a, the the caps are plentiful, and they don't. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hell yeah, Brennan! You don't know Fallout, right? You don't I, know much. I about I, it at I all. know nothing. I've never played any of the games. I know 
Fallout 76 might have been bad, but it got good. But it might still be bad. I don't know. I know yeah. that's like the live service one. It's kind of dumb. It's kind of a dumb, dumb game, but it's got knows? the snap. Well, I had fun with it. No, wasn't the Fallout one like like with the Snallygaster? Like there was a thing called a Snallygaster, but it was like a failed experiment. Yeah, it's it's not light. It's, it's not, not the same thing. It's not the cool big bird. It's somewhat inspired by it. There are some visual similarities, but it's pretty much its own idea. They just took a cool name, and I, I can't blame them. Snallygaster is a fucking insane name. Mm-hmm. Fallout 76 had a lot of creatures based on cryptids in the Appalachian Mountains, and they also just grabbed some. There was a Mothman. There's like a big guy. There's Sheep Squatch. That's pretty cool. I never, I never thought... I mean, I, I guess it's understandable. I never played the game. I never played the games. I, I never thought of Fallout to be like this, to have like fucked up animals in it. But yeah, that's like it's the whole thing. Thinking about it retroactively, it kind of makes an insane amount of sense. Mm. That's on me. Like that's everything's on me for not like a fucked up that. animal. There's Brahmin. There's two headed cows. There's the Death Claw. There's the Rad Stags. There's the Rad Roach. Whoa, you got a lot of crazy. I might animals. need to play one of these games. Yeah, play Fallout. Um. New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas. No, maybe start with Fallout 4. Fallout 4. I don't know. Fallout New Vegas is my favorite. Okay, audience, here's my take. Fallout New Vegas is probably my favorite. Fallout 4 is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. I don't think it's as good, but it's got better, like, it's got better, like, gameplay, like, second to second, but Fallout New Vegas is overall the better game because it's got better RPG elements, more memorable characters. More environmental storytelling. Yeah, your, your own character is more interesting. There's just a lot about Fallout New Vegas that makes it more compelling to me. I, I've said this before. This is my hot take. I've never heard anyone say this. I think Fallout 4 and like Fallout 3 and the, a lot of the mainline Bethesda games feel you know, apocalyptic. Everything sucks. Things are pretty dour. Like Every now and then there's signs of life, but for the most part, things don't feel too good. Fallout New Vegas feels post-apocalyptic. It feels like the apocalypse came and people moved on, and now you're really living in a new world. Because like people are fucking around. They're hanging out. They're blasting off into space. They're living in big dinosaurs. They're gambling at casinos in New Vegas. Whereas, like, Fallout 3, people are, like, living in an old fucked up boat. And they're, like, (laughs) everybody's sort of like, I wish my grandma would come back. And Fallout New Vegas, people just be like, hey, man, go on this crazy quest to find the... I don't know. Fallout New Vegas, I just... It's got a lot of personality. Love that game. Audience, what do you think? Fallout New Vegas? (laughs) Fallout New Vegas? (laughs) <laughs> yeah! Fallout 4? Fallout 3? Fall, uh, Fallout? I like all Fallout. of them. Fallout show? I'm a big Fallout head. You do love Fallout. Yes. We had, yeah, you gotta save this for Fallout. Let's talk about it. I know. That's why this is like the sneak peek. But um, So we're talking about the Snallygaster in Fallout and how it sort of changed its description, the differences. Because we, at this point, know enough that we'll be able to see where they took inspiration, where they didn't. Yeah, we, we can com- not <clears throat> relatively confidently talk about Snallygaster. Yeah, we have enough that we can see where it's different. Anyway, yeah. Um, the first thing I've got here is a quote from a Fallout 76 loading screen, actually. What? The horrifying results of experiments with the experimental forced evolutionary virus, or the FEV, as Fallout fans may know it better. The Snallygaster has six limbs, numerous eyes along its back, and an extended tongue covered in acidic goo that can rapidly take down any survivors. Okay, so they... So right off the back... They took liberty on the whole one eye thing. Yeah, they said million eyes. They just eyes. gave him five bajillion on his back. Got no wings. Um, it also added another limb. But it's like they said, this is a mutant. It's a different yeah. sort of idea. Uh, different they, take on they it. did kind of keep the whole like tentacles in its mouth thing with mm-hmm. the with the big slimy tongue. Yeah, it it's it does look otherworldly still. So I'll I'll show it to you in a second. But it's very interesting. It almost looks like the uh, for all my Stranger Things fans in the audience, a bit like a, one of those Demogorgon dogs. Oh it's yeah, not yeah. unlike that creature. But um, background. This is all Fallout seventy six information. This is not authentic Snallygaster lore. This is Fallout 76 Snallygaster lore. Just brace yourself. Uh, you can skip this part if you'd like. I think you should listen to it because who knows, we might start talking about something crazy Whoa. that you know, might be the highlight of the episode and then you skipped it. So You just, you just want this because you just want to talk about this because you like Fallout. Yeah, so what? <laughs> Experiments with recombined strains of FEV at the West Tech Research Center in Appalachia produced numerous failed mutations with two exceptions. The first of these was a big, long string of numbers and letters that I'm going to skip. Um, changes include a number of ocular organs along the enlarged torso. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Okay, biology. <clears throat> the Snallygaster is a quadrupedal creature. It has two arms with three claws each. Claws are something that returns, of which one is an opposable thumb. 
oh. and two small limbs on the back of its body, which it usually uses to support itself while sitting. That's probably an homage to the wings. Two small You're right. uh, limbs. Yeah, the little weird angel wings. Yeah, it is interesting to see how they took it and really warped it. I would be interested in seeing what an actual one looks like in the context of the game. Like yeah, like a, like a real like a more like the, authentic Snallygaster. Yeah, like a like a true to not true to life, true to life one. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, no, actually, yes, no, a true to life Snallygaster in in Fallout. Yeah, that would be interesting, but I I like that it is trackable. No, they they do have a cool take on it. I'll give them that. Um, it has no proper face, but has a mouth with a large tentacle like tongue covered in acid and has multiple eyes along its back. A Snallygaster will use its tongue like a whip up close and spits balls of acid at range. Snallygaster has at least 40 eyes, two rows of teeth, and thorns on its back. It has been described as being a dragon-like demon that haunts an area outside of neighboring DC. A okay, dragon-like so they, demon, they, t- they lifted that uh, they kinda, description. They kind of gave it a power with, with spitting acid. Mm. It has somewhat of a power now. Yeah, but this is only in the game. Only in the game. They are easily recognizable from a distance due to their signature clicking sounds and the thick, pungent odor they emit. Our sh- the real one shrieks. This one doesn't really click. Yeah. Um, gameplay attributes. The Snallygasters really are almost exclusively found around highly toxic or irradiated areas in groups of up to four. When provoked, they will spit a ball of toxic slime from the mouth, dealing poison damage. They will then run to the player character and use a melee attack, either scratching or hitting the player character. Why do I keep reading this like this? <laughs> they will then run to the player character and use a melee attack, either scratching or hitting the player character with their tongue. When idle and having not spotted the player character yet, they can be heard making various grunting and snorting noises. They're immune to radiation damage and take 150% damage when struck in the head. There's also, like, a million variants of this thing. And it has, like, this crazy chart that shows, like, their weaknesses. And it's kind of hard to read. So I'll just read uh, some of these variants in the game. Let's hear it. The nascent Snallygaster, the Snallygaster, the Prime Snallygaster, which has the Primal Cuts technique, apparently. Uh, Bloody Snallygaster, Glowing Snallygaster, Scorched Snallygaster. And we actually have some information on these. The Bloody Snallygaster has a dark red hide, giving it the appearance of being covered in blood, so it's not actually bloody. Glowing Snallygaster, which glows green following exposure to high levels of radiation. Scorched Snallygaster, a charred, fleshy Snallygaster infected with the Scorched Plague. All regular Snallygaster variants have a corresponding Scorched variant with the same stats, abilities, and items. They may become Scorched when attacked by Scorched Beast or the Scorched Beast Queen, becoming allies with other scorched creatures okay so are, they, are these just like reskins of the snallygaster in the game i think so they're like tr- stronger variants like you probably encounter the snallygaster when you're like level two but then you hit like level 80 and you're probably fighting a lot more glowing snallygasters well, that's kind of lame i don't i don't usually like usually like that in games i don't really mind it in fallout it, it might be different in fallout. It's, a, it's a different thing <laughs> it's like uh fallout the you're not you nobody really plays fallout for the combat which is why fallout 4 was controversial because it, it went way more in on the combat, but it, it, like it made it more usable, but it didn't really make it amazing or anything. Like yeah. A lot of the enemies were still pretty generic, but and there were just less RPG elements. That's why people like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas more, because the shooting is kind of god-awful, but you don't really give a shit about it, because it's like you're exploring an interesting world and meeting interesting characters and making interesting decisions. There's a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah. So the combat sort of adds to it. Like the fact that it's bad. I don't know. Fallout the earlier Fallouts feel like they were designed with a lot designed with a lot more thought behind them in my opinion. Really? Even though I don't think they were. I think it's just coincidental. <laughs> but um yeah, that's my take. I hope the fans love this gaming segment. This is probably going to be like 7 minutes. That's okay. Gob- I feel like a good amount of goblin hour fans are probably gamers. It's derailed, yeah. Uh, locations, they can be found at the Flooded Train Yard, Toxic Larry's Meet and Go, Charleston between the Hornwright Industrial Headquarters and the Charleston Capitol Building, Federal Disposal Field HZ21, Pylon V13, Kitty Corner Cabins, Treetops, uh, Hemlock Holes, and Vault 96 during a Satisfied Conscience quest. I hope someone playing Fallout uses this uses this episode of Goblin as, their guide. as a guide to the Snallygaster. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Fallout 76 was weird. I played it a little bit. I had fun with it, but that was mainly because I was playing it with my cousin, and we had a lot of fun. It was a time where we, like, you can compete for resources with other players, and there was, like, a level a million guy fighting Whoa. us. So we would keep going in and trying to beat him, and we kept dying. <laughs> but So he had, like, a fucking um, a monopoly on the resources we wanted, so we were pretty pissed off. But it was a lot of fun. What an, what an asshole. I yeah. hate this guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. 
But uh, here are some notes, by the way. A more historic depiction of the Snallygaster appears on the Season 12 scoreboard, Rip Daring in the Cryptid Hunt, encircled around the Compass Rose. And I actually did see a picture of this when I was uh, looking at it. I don't believe I have it on here. Oh, no, I do. I'll show it to you in a second. Yeah, the, the images are pretty interesting for the Snallygaster. I like the pictures they included. But, um, and apparently prior to patch 18, the Snallygaster's toxic spit projectile would remain on the ground for a brief period of time. Although there was never a button prompt, activating the objects would move the... Cut off. Uh, Bummer. this item had a negative caps value. When placed in a player vending machine, maybe you would pick up an acid or something. Whoa, a negative oh cap would default to the maximum cap sale volume value due to an underflow wrapping background. Originally, it had an inspection model depicting green globules, but was had to have no preview model on unknown patch. This item was considered a bug and has since been removed from the game. So it sounds like it was like an so, infinite money yeah, glitch. Yeah, it, it did used to be a genuine infinite money glitch. That's awesome. That's crazy. All right. And this is a unique enemy to Fallout 76. I hope we see this creature again at some point in a game that runs a little better. Fallout 5. Yeah, which will be out in 70 years. Oh, is it a bit? Is it like? Is it like the GTA? It Dude, they revealed it come out for fifteen years. They've said, like years ago, we're gonna make Elder Scrolls Six after Starfield, and then it went Fallout Four, then Fallout Seventy Six, and they were like, "All right, we're gonna make Starfield," which I didn't like that much. Audience, um, then they were like, "Next is Elder Scrolls Six, and it seems like that's still years off." And so Fallout Five is probably years after that. So yeah, we, no. we have to wait for Elder Scrolls to come, have its entire life cycle. They need to continue developing on it. Like, we don't even know if they have the story planned out. We don't know if they started coding. We don't know what the fuck they're doing. But it's probably years off. What they need to do, and here's my hot take, audience. Let me get this mic Whoa. close to my mouth. Bethesda, if you're listening, please let Obsidian or some other company come in. Just let them fuck around with your engine and make a game with it. We still love you, Bethesda. I love Fallout 4. I love Fallout 3. But I would love to see another developer's take because that's how we got Fallout New Vegas. And that was one of the most interesting, fun games I've ever played. Please let them do it again. Even if it's not good, it's still just content for us to play in your amazing engine you've created. Even though people shit on Creation Engine, no game feels like a Bethesda game. So let them make more. Please. Okay, rant over. All right, cool. I don't know, you might you might have picked the wrong guest to have on for the for the Fallout segment because I, I don't know nothing about no, no it's okay Bethesda, I don't know nothing about no Skyrim no it, it's Fallout, okay you don't no need nothing. to this is just this quick segment I'm just more or less going oh yeah really wow <laughs> that's crazy yeah no it's fine um, that's cool. I'm not I'm not mad or nothing for the record. Oh check this out behind the scenes the Snallygaster follows the idea established in Fallout 76 monsters and that it is based on a local legend. However, the legend of the Snallygaster is more within the area of Frederick County, Maryland, and it does not match its mythological counterpart as closely in appearance. And then it says where the name comes from again. Uh, the Snallygaster concept art was an approach to create a very mutated creature rather than a mythical horrifying beast. So, I would say uh, start on the first page for looking at the picture, and then go to this last page for All looking right. at the other pictures. Let me just double check that there's nothing interesting on any of the other pages. Ooh, the classic uh, Goblin Hour paper rustling ASMR. Um, if you want, you can look through the whole thing, I guess, because you can look at like how crazy the little charts on its weaknesses are. Because it's, I did not play Fallout seventy six or get into it enough to like be able to read those charts. But oh, that that is like the little the little Demogorgon dog from that show you were talking about. Yeah, it, it's like a pink fleshy mutant on all fours, gamers. So ooh, I, I like that. Uh. I kind of like that front angle on the on the last page, that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. You, you see his cool teeth. And you can see on the compass thing it was talking about where the creature is, the, the one where they sort yeah. of homaged it. Yeah, he's, got, he's got a big old tail. I he like the art they did. It still, has the, uh, it still has the angel wings. Yep. That's really interesting. They kept that consistent. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, this is a cool guy. Yeah, he's pretty interesting looking. And this is from, this is like the Fallout wiki? Yeah. All right, nice. This is, and, oh yeah, the, that's all the variants you were talking about? Yeah, no, that's a, the, you know what? Fallout 76 design team? Good job. Good job. You get my thumbs up. Yeah, it looks like an interesting creature. But, okay, end of the Fallout segment. All right, uh, for all you guys who skipped it, 
and skip to this point. Welcome back. Welcome back to Goblin Hour. This is not Fallout Go- Hour. Goblin Hour Classic. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Snallygaster a little bit more. Okay, this is the last one I have, and it's the Cryptid Wiki, as <gasps> always. Yeah, Ooh, I fucking love the Cryptid Wiki, dude. <laughs> yeah, Cryptid Wiki. Yes. Oh my god, I dude. I love, like, I don't think you understand. Every time I listen to Goblin Hour, you start citing the Cryptid Wiki. I always get so happy. Yeah, the Cryptid Wiki is pretty good. Easily my favorite Goblin Hour source. Okay. Snallygaster. Not to be confused with the Snowly Ghoster. What? The Snallygaster. I don't know. The Snallygaster <laughs> is a mythical dragon like beast said to inhabit the hills around uh, Washington and Frederick Counties, Maryland. Background. The area was settled by German immigrants. Yeah, yeah. This is probably all just going to be lifted from Wikite- uh, Wikipedia. The early stories suck the blood of its victims. Seven pointed stars. Yeah, that's something that doesn't come up a lot. Right, yeah, no. The Apparently, seven if pointed you star paint seven pointed stars on your building, it'll stay away. Oh, I thought, I thought they were like little ninja stars. I'm going grew. to take it that way too. <laughs> I'm going to say that is a weakness because uh, yeah. if it sees a seven pointed star on a building and stays away, what do you think a physical manifestation of its weakness is going to do? You're right. It's going to fucking like, like sizzle could, as it makes contact. If it contact. gets stabbed by a seven pointed star, like you said, it is just straight up fizzling. <laughs> It's going to turn into dust. <laughs> yeah, no, that is how you kill it. That's my headcanon anyway. I'm going to start carrying around a seven-pointed star with me. Just in I case. Go. You never know when a snally gas will come <gasps> This up. talks more about the Duayo. Oh, his mortal enemy? His rival. Yes. Even. Oh, my God, his rival. Yeah, I, just, I still fucking love the note that Theodore Roosevelt <laughs> was going to go hunt it. That's fucking badass. Dude, this, like... Dude, it caught the eye of a fucking U.S. president, dude. Like, I wish that was still the hijinks our presidents got up to. Like, I wish Trump in office was like, I need to go deal with the fucking uh, Goku came to the real world. I I'm need gonna, to fight him. I'm going to go fight Goku. I'm going to do it so great. Like, I, I love fighting like Goku. That. That'd be good. But unfortunately. No. Uh, I think government officials do need to do need to get into more hijinks. They need to, need, Amen, brother. They need to start doing battle with some creatures. Anyway. The Dewayo. Okay. The Snallygaster has one widely known enemy called Dewayo. The Dewayo is reported to be a mammalian biped with features similar to a wolf, but the stance and stature of a human. The sightings of Dewayo are primarily reported in West Middleton, Maryland, but sightings have also been reported in Wolfsville, Maryland region. The Dewayo and the Snallygaster have reportedly had vicious encounters dating back to early settlement of the Middletown Valley. Whoa. Holy shit. I cannot believe that. They've been rivals for eons. They really are like Grudon and Kyogre. That's crazy. <laughs> Not, doing that again. Not doing that again. In 2021, Sarah Cooper, a cryptozoologist in Maryland, opened the American Snallygaster Museum in Liberty Town, Maryland. What? Does this exist and can we go to it? Yeah, I think so. Oh my god. Okay. There's a whole museum for the Snallygaster? Another Goblin Hour field investigation topic. Again, like I, I said it before, I'll say it again. That, like, why have I never heard of this thing? Why does like, this has mo- like this has modern day significance? Yeah, I know it's crazy. It's in, it's in media. It has a museum. Why do more people not know about this? Yeah, I'll show you the, these pictures are really cool too that it has. I'll show them to you in a minute. But yeah, this thing is wild. Um, let's see what else we got here. <sighs> Fucking comments are off to a dumbass start. No, that's the best part. Dr. Frank's SCP-118-2022. Jersey Devil could be related. Sure, man. I mean, he came up He came up before. Jersey Devil did. Um, let's make a poll. Who do you want to win in a battle? Dwyo <laughs> or Snallygaster? I vote for Snallygaster, says this guy. Wait, I mean, you do, I feel like you don't even need our votes. Snallygaster is superior. Yeah, I, I mean, we don't know enough about it, frankly. But I do like I mean, the Snallygaster. At the, yeah, more. at the moment, I'm in the Snallygaster. Because it's a wolf man. Like, completely due to bias. He's cool. He, yeah, all we know about him is he's a cool little wolf man. He stands on two legs. That's all we got. Yeah. Come on, Snallygaster? That like, guy dude, is funny. Big bird, one eye, angel wings, sort of claws. Also, metal like beak. Metal like beak. Half maybe reptile. even two sets of teeth. Half reptile. Tentacles he's, he's coming crazy. out of the mouth. Like, dude, this guy has so many abilities. Also, yeah, uh, Omega, holy shit, Omega Groudon commented. Whoa, the real one? Yeah. 524-2019, it's rare for two cryptids to meet each other, which is kind of what we're talking about. Normally, they don't really have that bleed yeah, into no. each other. It so is the insane. They are treating it like a regular animal, like, which is cool. They're not unlike Kyogre, Groudon, uh, <laughs> Viper, Zangoose. <laughs> they're very Pokemon-esque, yeah, these two. You know, Torchic, Totodile... Torchic! 
Yeah, uh, we recommend back in the gaming zone. Pokemon. But um, uh, we've been playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. The characters are Torchic, who is our player character, and then Totodile, who is the partner. Um, if you're playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX on your Switch or XD or whatever it is, I do highly recommend Totodile is on your team somehow. And I think he does a lot better as the supporting character rather than the main character. But we love Totodile. No, it is, it is a it is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX, I believe, because you're mm-hmm. you're thinking of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness for the Nintendo GameCube. Ooh, not to be confused. Ooh, let's just say I know a thing or two, okay? But yeah, check out uh, Totodile, great character. All right, um, moving on. Let's keep going. Uh, so we have that. Somebody said my all-time favorite cryptid. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. this person says love West Virginia cryptids. And somebody commented, actually, the Snallygaster comes from Maryland. <laughs> so get fucking owned, Theo Ronaldo. So wait, hold on, Ben. Just to, to backpedal a little bit to the Pokemon, we're back in the gaming zone. <laughs> gaming zone. Just just real quick, what what typing would you assign to the Snallygaster? Oh, that's a good question. Okay. um, So I'm going to go off the literal traits we know it has. So it flies. So flying is definitely on the board. Got to be flying. Well, I don't know how I would board. give it water. Definitely not water, definitely not fire, definitely not poison. Dragon has potential. I think fairy also has potential. Okay, so I think for me, I would want to give it dragon fairy typing. Dragon fairy typing, that's because interesting. Because it's mythical, It people have been comparing it to dragons a lot, and dragon fairy is incredibly unique typing. Currently, there's one Pokemon that has ever had it, and it's a mega form, so it has been absent from the games for years. From the main series games, at least. So I would adore a dragon fairy Pokemon based on the Snallygaster. And also just in general. Like, if I actually had to think what type it literally would be, probably flying and I'm inclined to say, like, dragon again, maybe. That's what I was thinking. Just because that's what we've heard a lot. But it could also be flying steel because of um, its metal beak. Because of its cool beak. It could be flying fairy just because, you know, it's mythical. It could be flying... If we go with the if we go with the Fallout variant, you could do Flying Poison. Flying Poison, yeah. Honestly, I'd probably drop Flying since it doesn't really fly in the Fallout one. Oh yeah, like yeah. you could still give it Flying because there are a lot of Pokemon that don't fly that have Flying type. Well, I, I no, I do think take Flying away from it because the Fallout one very much does not fly. Maybe I'd give it Poison Dragon. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I mean, Game Freak Pokemon Company. If you if you start you're, basing if you're listening if you're listening to this. You know, Snallygaster no, Pokemon, we think it could go hard. More, more cryptid Pokemon would just be cool in general. Are there any? I'm sure there are a few I, that I just can't think of. Because there's always, like, some weird mythical creature that I they mean, there's a there's a Pokemon with. for everything. Let's like, Dunsparce it. is arguably a cryptid Pokemon because it's based on a Japanese myth slash oh, legend. Yeah. So, there are definitely some. But, I don't know. Oh, All right. somebody... All right, somebody did a parody. This is Prometheus Yo of the song Country Roads. Clearly, they're referencing Fallout. Can you sing because, it? Because, yeah, I will. It's, uh, they're referencing Fallout 76. Country Roads was sort of the main song that game was advertised with. So, yeah. Country Roads, take me home to the place I belong. Weird frog thing. It has two <laughs> mouths. Take me home. Home, home. He changed two lines. <laughs> I know. I don't know what the fuck this <laughs> was. All, why would you post that? Yeah, uh, pretty good. Thank you, Prometheus Yo. That was good. Thank you, Prometheus Yo. We appreciate your lyricism. And Ben, we, we appreciate we appreciate your your vocalism. Thank you, dude. You might you might have a future in singing. Thank you, dude. Hit me up. We could we could we could start we could start a cool band. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Yeah. Next we got uh, from Rob Brewster, 125-2018. He put together a creature feature on this guy here. It is pretty fascinating to see how the myth has evolved over the years and the strange connection between it and the Duayo. I agree. I don't know what a creature feature is. I don't know who this man is, but, you know, that's that's cool. Oh, what the fuck? This guy was in the... This next guy coming up, he was in the episode I just fucking recorded like an hour ago. Dude, on what, the is it with, what is it with these recurring characters from Cryptic This Wiki? is Godzilla 2004, X Mothra 2004. Whoa. And his theory is that the Popobawa flew all the way to North America and put on a bird disguise. All right, where's my phone? Write this down. Popobawa. Uh, 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 
Uh, uh, All right, check uh, this out. From Houston Batman, I made a page for the Dwyo. I would appreciate it if someone edited it. <laughs> and then he links it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can someone know. please edit my article, please? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's how it works. I mean, anyway. yeah. Actually, no. Why am I shitting on That is Wikipedia. The whole <laughs> the whole concept is like This is cryptid Wikipedia. But um, this person says Noto Bird. They're like, I added the dragons and dragonoids category. Don't know why it wasn't there before. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what? Why is it under category arthropods and dinosaurs and pterosaurs? I don't know. That's a Wait, good question. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's bird-like, I guess. Whoa. Those are, like, um, big birds are kind of dinosaur-esque, I suppose. I'm going to skip that comment because it doesn't really make sense. Okay. And it doesn't, like, lead into anything it's, good. Yeah, it's not even, like, funny. Okay. Um, this person said, I think this is either a pteranodon or a demon from hell. Good guess, amazing Mr. Turtle 2016, <laughs> who commented this in 2016. That could be said about, like, the whole, the demon from hell, that could be said about literally any cryptid. Oh, do I think the oh, last, I think the big worm is a is a demon from hell? Uh, yeah. Maybe I don't know. It's sure, big, it's big and scary and kills people. Sure, why not? This is from Fifteen Sturmel. Am I the only one who thinks this thing looks like it belongs in the live action Scooby Doo movie? It looks looks <laughs> looks like it should be in the live action Scooby Doo movie if you think about it. This guy loves the live action <laughs> Scooby Doo movie. This guy's movie. a psycho. Oh yeah, this guy's talking about how Snallygaster means quick ghost. Uh, Geister is a German word for spirits, but it's commonly used as a synonym for Gespenster, which means ghosts. Okay. A ran- an anonymous user said funny name. I will, You know what? I will give him that. Snallygaster is a funny name. It is a funny name. Um, somebody compared it to Ridley, and then these guys were talking about how it looks like Ridley. We love um, uh, Metroid. I've only ever played Metroid Dread. I've only ever played Metroid Fusion. Yeah. Metroid Fusion, and I liked that one a lot. I thought that one was really fucking good. I thought Dread was really fucking good. We, we do. We love Metroid. We love. We love Metroid. We don't play a lot of you them. You know but what? Good we games. love games. Yeah, I did not um, like Super Metroid that much. I thought Metroid Fusion was awesome, and I thought Metroid Super Metroid was kind of okay. I, I just didn't like the controls as much. No, that see, I, I well, what was what did that what did that one come out on Super Metroid? Uh, SNES. Oh, okay. Oh well, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I don't have anything against it. I just didn't like playing it. I thought the atmosphere was cool, but I really liked Metroid Fusion. Yeah, well, I I, I think that's why it, that, that I think Dread might be the coolest one because you know you get the cool graphics, you get the cool controls with the, the cool cutscenes with, with the modern Nintendo. Get the cool cutscenes. You scenes. get the cutscene where Samus shoots a guy. We're fucking gamers today. God, we are the gaming. Brother. I hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a pterodactyl. It is a cyclops bat. Looks like Ridley's deformed cousin. I take it this thing doesn't have depth perception. Why would it evolve to only have one eye? Yeah, I agree. I Wait, thought yeah, that was interesting right. because it doesn't really make sense what value it gets out yeah, of it. Yeah, because if you're if if you're a bird, you'd think that's the most important time to have multiple eyes. Yeah, is being able to properly perceive depth because if you're flying as fast as this thing is supposed to be able to, it's kind of an insane idea like, that yeah. it is. You are you know, not making a smooth landing. Yeah, so I. You do not know when your your it's steel strange, claws are touching the ground. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it has other sensory organs that weren't mentioned on here. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe it maybe it has more than five senses. Maybe maybe it's got seven. I don't know. Amen, brother. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think that's kind of it. Do you have any uh, closing thoughts on the Snallygaster? I mean, it's interesting. Amazing name. Incredible creature. Like. This, I, I truly think this has got to be the most visually interesting creature that has appeared on Goblin Hour. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you've already you've already said it multiple times, but, I mean, listener, if you haven't already, dear God, Google a picture yeah, of seriously. the Snallygaster. Like, it kind of, we can't really do it justice with the explanation. Like, the fucking... It's impossible to, oh, do, to do justice. Oh, Chu makes sense. The fucking uh, Cape Lobo makes sense. You can draw on those using yeah. your human brain but this almost looks like you know a de-plucked or a, a sorry de-plucked a plucked t- uh, chicken or turkey with the way it's like long neck is um it reminds me of a vulture a little bit it's a crazy looking animal no like a oh god it, again like it goes without saying just easily one of the most visually striking i just say cryptids in general yeah like not even i agree not even limited to goblin hour of the cryptids i know of definitely 
Yeah, because most like most of them is just oh, it's an animal, but a little weird, but a crazy it's, it's humanoid, Ha-ha, look how but crazy. a little weird. Yeah, but no, this one it's, it's a big bird. It's got one eye. It's got uh, it's got a big beak. It's got maybe two sets of teeth. I don't know. It's got big tentacles coming out of his mouth. It's got steel claws. It's got the, the angel wings. It's powerful. It, it, it's powerful. It doesn't have powers though, which I do think is cool. It has strength. It has flight. It's got. It doesn't have any like elemental or sort of supernatural it's def- powers. It's it definitely is, a physical attack. It is physically rooted into our world. It is not making packs with things. I think the ghost connection that people are drawing is sort of just based on its speed and its elusiveness. I don't think it's literally a spirit yeah. or a demon. I think it's just being misidentified. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it was just before they understood. Oh wait, maybe maybe this is just an animal. We maybe don't this know is about just yet. a creature. Maybe maybe this isn't fucking grandpa coming back. <laughs> All right, cool. I mean, I think we're pretty much done. Do you have any closing thoughts besides Snail Guess? Or like, do you want to shout anything out? I mean, uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, Lardy McBucket. That's L A R D Y M C Bucket. I'm private right now for private reasons, but I will accept you. Don't worry. Hmm. Uh, follow me on Instagram at. I am the real Brendan, all one word. That's I am the real B R E N D A N. I'm not private on that one, so you don't even you don't even got to worry about that. But I mean, yeah, outside of that, I don't. I, I think I don't think I got much in terms of in in much of the way in terms of shouting out. Okay, well, cool. I mean, that's awesome, <laughs> man. Uh, I think we're all done here. So, listeners, I hope you have a good night. This has been Goblin Hour. See you later, guys. We're getting we're heading out. Love you. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. See ya. Yeah, good bit. Good bit. All right. <sighs> Finally. Good to be done. I hate recording for Goblin Hour.